Oh hallelujah, we're having a thunderstorm. So gonna try and catch some of the lightning bolts for you guys. Apparently the one of the warmest days in the of the year in the United Kingdom. So we're told that a little bit of fresher weather is coming in. Um, overnight, so we're going to be getting some rain. But I uh, had a little flash over to the corner there, I don't know if you saw that. But uh, yeah, I mean, the, the empires um, going all the way back to Egypt. And then you had a. Uh, Arabian Empire and then you had the Medo-Persians sorry then you had Babylon and then you had the Medo-Persians, Greece, uh, Greece, Rome the Islamic Empire and then you had sort of off and on the Crusaders but uh, never really captured the Holy Land for a long time but uh, what you obviously have now in the area is, uh, you know, the Rothschilds, um, the bankers, you know, as, as Alex Jones will go on about, the bankers, right? Well, I guess uh, God has used these guys to bring in uh, the land of Israel again, the nation of Israel. It was prophesied in the last days. A lot of people have a problem with it. But at the end of the day, it is what it is. Um, Basically, uh, it's probably God's plan. It's very clear in His Word that He would do it in the last days, that uh, He would form the land of Israel again. Many false prophets and false prophetesses have, you know, made false predictions that there'd never be the land of Israel until Jesus returns, and Christ made it very plain in Matthew 24. Um, that indeed, you know, in the last days, the watch out for the fig tree. The fig tree represents uh, Israel. Um, the olive tree represents more more God's people, the, the anointed ones of um, Jeshurun is a Israel within Israel. So it's the olive tree really represents the, the twelve tribes of Israel, um, which is known as Israel and Judah. They are split into two camps, type of thing. Or you could argue it could be Israel and the Gentiles, you know, you have the two olive trees. Basically the olive trees represent anointing. And uh, so you have the anointed, uh, wow, that was big, I'm sure you saw that one. <laughs> I'm sure you saw that one, guys. It's pretty awesome. But, um, yeah, what you have is the olive tree represents... Um, God's anointed people, the fig tree represents the land of Israel and so Christ in Matthew 24 spoke about the fig tree appearing again which was speaking about the formation of the land again Hallelujah We don't argue with God, it's truly His word, you know, and uh, you know, so people have a problem with Zionists, they say, oh Zionists formed the land of Israel, it, it was God God is the one who's in control of uh, all the nations, it says. In fact, in the book of Isaiah, God says that the nations are but a drop in the bucket. Um, if you can imagine that, having a, a big bucket and uh, just a little drop in it. Well, that's that's all that really God uh, sees the nations are. Y you know, Yahweh is the creator of the universe. We don't know how many um, worlds there are, you know. Uh, we, we, we read about certain things about uh, the fallen angels in the Bible coming coming down cohabiting with women, 200 of them and then they're bound because of their sin and another big flash there and so uh, even Satan it says fell like lightning I beheld you know and uh, Satan fell like lightning from heaven uh, people say that, uh, that that's connected with the word Barach. Um, it's really the Hebrew word is Baruch, which means bless, blessing. Uh, Barach, there, there, there could be in the Arabic, there could be some kind of connotation of uh, lightning. But uh, 
we know that this guy is obviously he's brought in. The, uh, you know, people say that the the worst law he's brought in is about the gay marriage. Well, that's that's probably uh, true. You know, to to a large extent, because it does go against the word of God. It does go against what Jesus Christ taught. Uh, in the natural realm, that there's uh, Adam and Eve, not Adam and Steve. Christ didn't go around uh, promoting gay marriage, you know. It, it, these people try and turn Christ into one of their, you know, he, you know, they just twist his words. And uh, I, I personally, I wouldn't like to meet Christ if if I'm going to be just treating him as a as a human puppet, just just to to forward my own world agenda. You don't want to face Christ if you're, if you're using um, Christ for that. The, the, the thing is, you can't use Christ. Christ uses you, and that is the gospel um, that we're preaching. We've came from all kinds of different backgrounds, you know, some of them criminal. Um, some of them have been homosexual, some of them have, uh, which is sodomite in the Bible. That's the word that the King James Bible uses for, for that term. Um, one of the only Bibles that still use that term, the correct term, Sodom and Gomorrah, where they had uh, marriage which was, uh, you know, with, with strange flesh as it were, you know, in the book of Jude it speaks about that. And so it's never going to be acceptable in, in God's sight. Uh, you can have a, you know, a sodomite a wedding in a, in a church. God is never going to accept it. No, he doesn't accept the act itself, and clearly he will never, never accept. Um, you know, it's, it's just not the definition of a marriage in the Bible. The definition of a marriage is two people who have a relationship with God, and uh, that God has brought them together for His purposes, and then they get married. That's that's what a true marriage is. Okay, it's not sexually based. It's uh, spiritually based, okay? If you can't marry somebody as a soulmate, if you, if you can't actually grasp what that means, then you're marrying that person for the wrong reasons, whether it be money, whether it be sex, whether it be something else worldly, you know, to get some kind of, uh, you know, work permit for, for some nation you want to stay in. You know, you want to uh, come out of a third world country and, you know, get get your little visa for for you know so you can work in, in, in another country and earn money you know there's many many women doing that now from the east um, coming across to the west marrying western men and then just basically trying to take their house trying to take their reputation trying to slander them and so on and so forth I mean it is really truly ridiculous what's happening it's not happening in small scale I believe it's fairly large scale what's happening today and uh, you know I've, I've been to India I've seen there's a lot of false converts there you know they just convert to Christianity outwardly but uh, inwardly are just they're, they're not converted they're not born again okay um, it, being born again means more than just being immersed in water it means truly you got to uh, repent of your sin, ask Christ into your life and really mean it um, really cry out to him and when you do that that's when he'll come into your life if you cry out to him not just by just saying a prayer, mouthing a prayer is not is, is not uh, good enough if you cry out to him accept him into, into your life he will take you through repentance, he will purge you he will cleanse you, he will come and live with you through the Holy Spirit. Only you need to ask, cry out to him and ask for him to come into your life. Hallelujah. And we, we, we do have this uh, tendency um, as human beings to uh, always look back on, on, on people's pasts and, uh, you know, where are you from, what sort of family do you have, what is your your educational background, your social background. You know, people just can't accept people for who they are. You know, they can't take them in face value and just speak to them. We always have this tendency to try to judge people, form opinions about people, when truly, um, we, we're not to do that. We're not to treat each other that way. 
Price was very clear about that. Um, judge not lest you be judged. Or if you judge, make a good judgment, you know. If you're if if you're analysing somebody's life or how they are, what they believe in, um, then then do it well. Do do it in the light of God and do it in the in the grace and mercy of God, and you'll form a correct opinion about somebody. If you're just going around maybe just to find some spot or blemish in somebody, and then to basically uh, try to slander them about that, that's that's Satan does that basically. That's that's what Satan does, you know. Satan doesn't have any um, power over God or God's people, but ev even if you think about it, he has some type of um, purpose in God's plan. Sometimes it is to show us our weaknesses and faults, um, just like a sergeant major would, you know, um, we're just near the army base just now, or a sergeant, you know, that when you're presenting, you're standing in line. Um, you know, and then he, he comes to inspect your, your uniform, if he sees any creases or blemishes in it, then he'll probably say some some uh, abrasive words to you and uh, get you to go and uh, sort it out. But, um, you know, that's not to say, you know, there is a parable about the, the wedding feast, you know, that Christ gave. If you're not wearing the, the correct clothes, you won't get into the, the wedding feast. That, that's a, that's a spiritually uh, term speaking. That if you're not born again, you're not going to be sitting um, at the wedding feast of the Lamb. That's a spiritual term, by the way. I can back that up using scripture, and I'll have examples of that. But uh, Satan is known as the accuser of the brethren. So he's he's a type of person that always looks and scrutinizes someone to see. Um, if there's any wicked background in that person so they can use it against them and uh, this is what Satan really gets up to and it's, it's, it's very sad because uh, you know unless you're born again truly you know you can't call out to Christ and know that all your sins have been forgiven past, present and future and, uh, and so it's very important that we should live our lives um, basically at the cross of Calvary each and every single day and um, you know so I hope that this word has been encouraging to you and we've enjoyed a little thunderstorm I hope it doesn't get any worse for my sake but I know that God will protect me and uh, I can just about see the moon again disappearing behind, behind the clouds once more and another flash of lightning. Hallelujah. As the Sabbath day ends. And the first day of the week begins. Which is tomorrow. On the biblical calendar. Hallelujah. May the Lord bless you.